Hello, this is Math Jazz from Almost Cool. This is the second video in our series of videos on limits. Our topic today is the sequential definition of limit. The limit of f of x as x goes to a is l if for every sequence xn goes to a, f of xn goes to l. This is denoted as so, the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l. This definition is perhaps a little harder to work with than the epsilon delta definition of limit, but I think it's easier to understand. We're going to show an example of a limit that does exist and a limit that does not exist in this video. If f of x equals 1 over x and a equals 1, then the limit of f as x goes to a is 1, and I have that written as a series of equalities here. Here is a graph of the function. I have picked a sequence converging to 1. We see these points get bigger and bigger towards 1. And now, for, for this function and this point a, what we'll find is that f of these points must converge to 1. That is, in x, like x sub n converge to 1, which is a, and f of xn converges to 1, which is l. So that means that the limit as x goes to a of f is l. So here I have taken f of each of these points and drawn them up here on the graph, and we notice that the y-coordinates of each of these points go down to 1. So that shows an example of uh, the, since the limit exists, the sequence in x is taken to a sequence in y that converges to L. Now, this works from the other side also. I have this sequence here in x converging down to 1, and I've taken f of that sequence, and we have these numbers converging up to 1. So we have a sequence converging to a in, in, on the x-axis, and we have a sequence converging up to l in the y's. And in fact, you know, since the limit exists, every sequence we pick converging to x equals 1 will be taken to some sequence that converges to y equals 1. Uh, we're not going to prove that the sequence is continuous. As I said, it's a little harder to work with the sequential definition of limit for proving that a limit exists. It turns out that it's very easy to use the sequential definition to prove that a limit does not exist. But, but it's hard to prove that a limit exists because to prove that you have to show every sequence that converges to A is taken to a sequence that converges to L. And there are infinitely many sequences to work with, so this is, this is typically a really hard proof to do uh, directly using, using this definition. We're going to get the epsilon delta definition of limit later, and that's a very nice way of saying this number is a limit. Using that definition, it's fairly easy to prove when something is a limit but it's, it's sometimes hard to show when things are not limits using the epsilon delta definition, and we're going to leave the epsilon delta definition for another video. Here's an example of a sequence that does not, I'm uh, sorry, a limit that does not exist. We're going to give two sequences that both converge to zero, and show that each of these sequences converges to, uh, f of each of these sequences converges to a different number. So we're going to say the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 1 over x does not exist because there is no number L such that every sequence converging to 0 is taken to a sequence that converges to L. So I've picked here a sequence, the sequence x sub n equals 1 over n pi. So when I take f of x sub n, I get f of, sorry, I get sine of 1 over 1 over n pi, but 1 over a fraction is just the reciprocal of the fraction, so I get sine of n pi, and sine of multiples of pi are 0. So I have here plotted out all of the points 
um, f of xn, which all have y coordinates of zero, and so this sequence converges to zero in in our y coordinate. However, um, even though this sequence converges to zero, I can pick a different sequence xn converging to zero in the x's, where f of xn will not converge to zero. So I've picked here xn equals 1 over 2n pi plus pi over 2. Notice that as n gets big, the denominator gets big, so the fraction gets small, so this fraction, sorry, this sequence converges to zero. But f of the sequence, this is going to be sine of 1 over 1 over 2n pi plus pi over 2, but 1 over a fraction is just the reciprocal of the fraction, so I get sine of 2n pi plus pi over 2, and sine of pi over 2 is 1, and pi has a period of 2 pi, sorry, sine has a period of 2 pi, so sine of 2n pi plus pi over 2 will always equal 1. So, that's why the points appear, f of x sub n, give us these uh, these points all having y coordinate being 1, and so this sequence converges to y equals 1. The other sequence converge to 0. So now we know that this limit does not exist because there is no number where all of the sequences will converge to it. No number L such that f of xn will always converge to it because we found one sequence that converges to 1, one sequence that converges to 0, and 0 and 1 are not the same number, so this limit doesn't exist. Thank you for watching this video. Contact information is on the screen. I hope that you're enjoying learning calculus, and I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.